My own view is that uh, the evidence uh, shows that we're not dealing with just uh, mistakes or sloppiness. There was something far more troubling here, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. I think the president has every right to be frustrated because I think what happened to him was one of the greatest travesties in American history. Without any basis, uh, they uh, started this investigation of his campaign. Uh, and even uh, more concerning, actually, is what happened after the campaign, a whole pattern of events while he was president. Uh, so I, uh, to sabotage the presidency. Hi again, everyone. They were remarkable comments at the time. Unprecedented, not normal public comments from the head of the Department of Justice about an ongoing investigation involving then-President Donald Trump's. Donald Trump's hand-picked Attorney General Bill Barr there speaking openly and brazenly about the examination he ordered and appointed U.S. Attorney John Durham to lead into the origins of the Trump-Russia probe, making misleading comments since we know that Durham found, well, to quote Bill Barr, Bill Barr's comments were bullshit. Durham found no evidence of a deep state plot against Trump. It was all a lie. Public comments like those from Barr, though, had consequences. They did damage to the department. They drove Durham's top aide, who had worked with him and for him for decades, federal prosecutor Nora Dennehy, to resign. Now, three years later, she has publicly spoken about it for the very first time, confirming that it was that. Words like that from Bill Barr, the politically motivated handling of the investigation that drove her to leave. Watch. In the late summer of 2020, just months before the 2020 presidential election, he wanted a report written about our ongoing investigation. Publicly, he would not rule out releasing that report before the presidential election. I had never been asked to write a report about an investigation that was not yet complete. I then saw a version of a draft report, the conclusions of which I strongly disagreed with. Writing a report, and particularly the draft I saw, violated long-standing long principles of the Department of Justice. Furthermore, the Department of Justice has a long-standing policy of not taking any public actions in the time leading up to an election that might influence that election. I simply couldn't be part of it, so I resigned. It was the most difficult personal and professional decision I've had to make. Nora Dennehy made those comments yesterday because she's now a nominee for the Connecticut State Supreme Court. And she made those comments, she shared those revelations for the very first time at her confirmation hearing. She stressed how she had worked at DOJ under several administrations and presidents of both political parties and how politics had never played a role in her work before. A dedicated civil servant, Dennehy's resignation signaled how far Trump and his allies had succeeded in bending the levers of the federal government to benefit the ex-president. And let us remind you right here that the Durham investigation yielded almost no convictions, nothing. A four-year investigation costing taxpayers $6.5 million resulted in a single guilty plea from a little-known FBI lawyer and two acquittals at trial by juries. And when evidence of a potential crime was turned over to Durham and his team, suspected financial crimes linked to the ex-president in Italy, we don't know anything. We don't know if Durham did anything with that. Certainly he didn't bring any charges. This is where we start the hour with some of our favorite experts and friends. Former top official at the Department of Justice, Andrew Weisswood is back with us, plus former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI, Frank Figluzzi is here. He worked for John Durham as a legal intern before he joined the FBI. And former FBI counterintelligence agent, Pete Strzok is here. Pete, I believe the very first time I talked to you, it was the day this story broke that Nora Dennehy had left the Durham probe. My, my question for you as an investigator is how do we find out where this draft report is of the Durham investigation that when she refused to write it, I had been asked to write a report, I refused to do it, but then she testified yesterday in a confirmation hearing, quote, there's a draft report was written. Um, what does it say? And shouldn't we be able to see it? 
Oh, well, Nicole, I think absolutely we should. I mean, look, this is what weaponization of the Department of Justice looks like, not the clown car that Jim Jordan is driving. It is things like this. And when you look, first, I want to thank Nora Danahy for her bravery, one, in this testimony, but two, for doing the right thing, for having the moral integrity to resign back in 2020. Because had she not done that, I think there's a very real chance that whatever this draft report was would have been published and quite likely could have impacted the 2020 election. But as to seeing it, you know, my question is, she joins now, if you think back, the four prosecutors who quit the Roger Stone prosecution, the at least one prosecutor who quit the Mike Flynn prosecution, many of whom I worked with. And so you have to ask this pattern of behavior of at least now six prosecutors who quit rather than put up with Bill Barr's just absolute corruption of the Department of Justice. DOJ OPR apparently is still doing some sort of work looking into this. But my question is, where is that? I, I don't know. And I look forward to reading this draft. Andrew Weissman, how do we get our hands on it? Again, this is what she testified to yesterday. Um, I was asked to write a draft report. I had never been asked to write a report for an ongoing investigation. Um, and then she says she looked at it. Uh, someone else did it when she refused. Um, does the public have a right and the people that were subjected to something that was purely political in nature. Um, does the public have a right to see that? Well, one of those people who is victimized by this is on our panel right now, which is Pete Strzok, who was unfairly maligned um, and was under sort of suspicion and, you know, completely cleared um, by the IG um, report and even by uh, the, I can't even call it a report, but the Durham, uh, I'm not even sure I could even call it an investigation. Um, but the, the way you get this is the Freedom of Information Act, uh, which is a statute that allows you to get government documents. Um, it may be redacted as to names that might be in there of people who um, should not, no aspersions should be cast on them. It might be one of the reasons that uh, Nora uh, resigned, because that would be improper. It would also be improper if it literally repeated the quotes from Bill Barr that you just played, uh, Nicole. It, just to, so everyone understands, the, the clip that you just played of Bill Barr has him lying. And that's, I usually don't like to use the L word like so clearly and just say, well, it's wrong, but who knows what his intent is. But here, just to be clear, the inspector general and even John Durham at the end of the day said that there was a factual basis to open the investigation. Um, and so your quote of uh, Bill Barr here is saying that there was no basis to open it. And that's that after everyone looked at that said that is wrong. Um, and he was making these statements to influence the election, to malign people at the FBI and the Department of Justice who were doing their duty. Um, it actually would have been, I think, a dereliction of duty if they had not opened an investigation. And that is what um, much of what uh, the inspector general found as well. So here I have that here, Andrew Weissman. Here is what the only IG not to be fired by Donald Trump. So not viewed as a deep state actor, right? All the IGs get canned except DOJ IG Horowitz. And here's what he found in 2019. Quote, we did not find documentary or testimonial yeah. evidence that political bias or improper motivation influenced the decisions to open the four individual resignations. He finds that in 2019. Um, so Bill Barr, not only does he lie, he, he seems to knowingly lie, Andrew Weissman. And I wonder if you can just speak to the pressure cooker that, um, I mean, I, I don't think Nora Denny is the only, I think three prosecutors end up quitting the Durham probe. Can you just describe that that pressure, the tectonic plates pushing against each other from Durham and Barr to people like Nora Dennehy? Sure. Um, well, I do think that Pete has the right, um, not even analogy, which is that there are. This is just an, a, a remarkable uh, uh, event to have people on a project resign. Uh, whether it was from the Department of Justice in in the Stone case and the Flynn case. Um, but here, um, the idea that Nora Denny, who had been in the department for years, was resigning over this, um, you know, I sort of put her in the category of people uh, like 
uh, Richard Donahue, of Jeffrey Rosen, the people who, at the end of the day, did the right thing. I think when she signed up for this, I mean, this was clearly going to be a sort of baseless investigation of the investigators. I don't think there was really a good faith argument for uh, for doing this. And their investigation actually proved that. Um, so, but I do think at the end of the day, when push came to shove, she, like Jeffrey Rosen, uh, the acting attorney general, and Richard Donahue, the acting deputy attorney general, um, they, like her, just there was a line they were not willing to cross. And so that's good for her that she did that. I'm not sure it's, I'd say that it's so great that all of those people participated in a regime where the basic goal of that regime was to undermine the rule of law. And she was present for Bill Barr making all of those statements um, and had not resigned. So, again, I'm not. I, I give her, you know, credit for leaving, and that is a tough decision. I'm not sure I'd give her a lot of credit for for staying and participating in that. Um, you know, I, I just don't think that's. It, I think when you look at what John Durham did, 24 jurors in two trials found unanimously um, that John Durham had not proved its case. Not a single one of the jurors agreed with him. 24 jurors said that the defendants in the case should be acquitted. If any one of them had disagreed, there would have been a hung jury. Instead, there were acquittals um, with respect to all counts of all of the defendants. Um, that's not a great record, and I think it's a testament to the fact that what John Durham was up to at Bill Barr's behest was really baseless, and people like Pete Strzok took the brunt of that, and they had no—there was no reason for them to, um, if in a system where it was going to be apolitical. I, I want to underscore that by showing you that 